welcome to the Gastric Health Show. My name is Dawn Boxel and I am your host. We are back for another podcast and another show for you to learn some more information that maybe you hadn't heard of. So today's topic, how to boost your metabolism and lose more weight. So I'm definitely going to be talking about something you probably have not heard discussed, uh, especially from your bariatric team, but something very important when it comes to weight loss, energy, your overall health, there is a secret, uh, if you want to say or think about, um, that many people just really, it's not, it's not discussed. So we're going to talk about it and bring it out and get you thinking and get you super smart so that you can start putting the puzzle pieces together to your health and give you the best opportunity to lose the most amount of weight that you you possibly need to. So first and foremost though, these podcasts are not intended for medical advice. They are for educational purposes only. And please talk to a healthcare professional before you implement any strategies from our podcasts. We would also love for you to share any of our podcasts with your friends or in those closed or secret Facebook groups that you are a part of that can help maybe be a solution or uh, some more information to people who are seeking advice. So we'd love for you to share our content. And we are hoping that you will join us for our next free 10 day back on track challenge, which is beginning on September the 17th. So if you have not registered, please do. You can just click on the link on the Gastric Health Shows page. It is a banner and just click on that and you can register right on our page for that um, so that you are um, a member of that group to to start this challenge beginning September 17th. If you've done a challenge of ours in the past, this is going to be a new challenge that we have updated. And so you may want to try it with us again and learn some new material that you might find to be extremely relevant and beneficial to you. So we look forward to connecting with you on that free 10 day challenge. Then also, if you have just found us and are not familiar with how to connect with us more, we do have a website at wlsguthealth.com. You can go there and sign up for our newsletters. You can also connect with us in our closed Facebook group, the Gastric Health Club. So if you look on Facebook for Gastric Health Club, just ask to join, answer a couple questions, and you should be in. And we would love to connect with you there. That's where we have lots of conversations. We have topics we discuss and people you know, bring questions. We also do Facebook Lives so that you have the ability to, to get more information and learn as much as possible. So we would love for you to connect with us if you haven't yet. And any of you that are already connected, Um, Feel free after any of these podcasts to start a conversation if you have more questions or you're you're confused or you don't agree. I would love to carry this conversation on in our Gastric Health Club, so feel free to do that at any time. So now that we've covered all those basics, let's kind of go into the detail of how to boost your metabolism and lose more weight. So this is something that you are probably not thinking about because this is something that has, you know, it's been known, but it's not what people think about when it comes to your metabolism. And we all know and agree that weight loss surgery is a great tool for losing weight. But as the months and the years pass after surgery, um, losing weight, you know, does change and sometimes, not sometimes, I would say most of the time, we as a healthcare professional, I have to to make it more personalized and go based on the individual. And I really have to make recommendations based on this person, not on my general guidelines that I give everybody right after surgery. So I am 
always really focus to the person and the big picture of what's going on in their health and what we're trying to accomplish. So you, you have to kind of hone in and this topic of metabolism is going to help you hone in a little deeper than you've probably ever been. But, you know, just giving, you know, programs, giving general guidelines to everyone, uh, that's awesome. You have to follow some basic boundaries. You have to have something that you follow. But long term, if you want to get all the weight off and, and maintain it, you might have to dig a little deeper. And so that's where you you really need to connect with your healthcare professional and really partner with them in helping figure out what is it that's maybe affecting your ability to get all the weight off. So what is metabolism? And I'm trying to keep this as high level as possible, not super deep, but some of these don't shut your brain off when I start talking about, you know, maybe words you've never heard before that are part of your normal body that, um, you know, have, have always been a part. We just, you know, it isn't discussed, but it is important and becoming more and more important uh, as, as research evolves and as healthcare evolves, this is talked about more and more. So you may find that you come across these type of articles uh, in, in now or the future that you've maybe, um, maybe you're already a healthcare professional. I will say a lot of, I have a lot of healthcare professionals that have had weight loss surgery do follow me and that I love uh, and, and would love to connect with any of you who, who have this background already to continue this conversation because I, I love this topic and I love talking about this, you know, it's really honestly just going back to biochemistry, but I'm gonna to try to keep it high level, not deep biochemistry. But anyway, I'm sure, you know, most of you are thinking when I'm talking about metabolism, you're thinking about your hormones, like your thyroid hormone or that. But I am going to talk to you about what the heart, what, what's going on at the heart of every cell, um, their energy source. And the energy source of every single cell in your body is our mitochondria. And I'm going to, you know, explain its connection with weight loss and how, how the health of your mitochondria and the abundance of your mitochondria make a difference on how much you weigh and how it impacts how much you weigh. <clears throat> so in functional medicine, it is all about getting to the root cause uh, and, and you know, talking about your mitochondria is the root of your metabolism and really chronic disease. And I will tell you, that's really a, a emerging thing that they are learning that, you know, the, if you're, the health of your mitochondria, if they are really unhealthy, your, your overall health is very poor and you have chronic diseases that you struggle with. So... Everyone is, is born with trillions of these little energy factories called mitochondria. And they provide fuel to run everything in your body. So mitochondria, if you kind of go back to if you had biochemistry in high school, and maybe that's been a few years, you know, like it is for me. <laughs> I remember maybe college biochemistry more than uh, high school biochemistry, but mitochondria convert the, oxy the oxygen you breathe and the food that you eat into energy for your body to use. And, and that is kind of the just of your metabolism. And mitochondria, it's not like you are just, you know, you throw in um, a log on the fire you or you could think of it as a steak on the grill and you eat it you burn it throw another steak on the grill you burn it you eat it um, it's more of a combustion process so it's not like it's you know you you eat it and burn it it's it's a you know mitochondria use a combustion process which they capture the energy from burning the steak but they store it so they take that energy that was created from burning the steak 
and they store it in three uh, chemical compounds. So there are three storage um, compounds. So don't shut your brain off here. I'll, keep, I'll give you the abbreviations as I go along, but it's adenosine triphosphate, so ATP, which is our energy source, um, nicotinamide dinoclu... <laughs> nicotinamide di dinucleotide, okay, nicotinamide dinucleotide, which is N-A-D-H, and then also flavin ad adenine, flavin adenine dinucleotide. So, and then the last one is flavin adenine dinucleotide, or F-A-D-H. So those are our three storage um, units for energy. So we, your body, you, you eat the food, your body burns it, and it takes the energy from burning the food and stores it into these three storage units to be used for energy. And these storage sites allow the energy to be transferred to the cells so they can do their work. So, so that's why those three things are so important. And mitochondria have a huge impact on your overall uh, metabolism, have an impact on your energy level, have an impact on just your overall health. So, of course, there is a genetic piece that plays a role in, in all of this, in, our, in the health of our mitochondria. And actually, there's a research study that has shown that if you have a parent or a sibling who has type 2 diabetes, your mitochondria are likely to be 50% less effective at burning calories than the average person, even if you are thin. So isn't that kind of interesting? But if you have listened to any of my shows, you have heard me say many, many times that just because your genetics have given you this code that of, you know, type 2 di diabetes, that doesn't mean that you're destined for that or that you can't correct that because of epigenetics. And we have the power to, to change the genetic expression through epigenetics. And that is really um, impacted by our diet and our lifestyle and, and how we manage stress and how we live our life and how you know we connect as a, a socially in a community all, all that plays a role in how our epigenetics uh, play out so then that it then impacts our genes and how they're they're expressed and how they're playing out so so just because you you maybe started life with maybe the mitochondria not being as healthy as they should have been, you know, maybe you, you will be able to correct that with choices that you're making. So always remember this, and, and I've said this many times as well, and it's all over our website and, and talked about in all my material, whenever you do our classes and stuff, Food is information, and this is a prime example of how food is information for our metabolism. And this is why it's so important that you eat whole real food. And why I'm, I'm so against packaged, processed, prepared, sugary, carby, snacky junk that the food industry has, you know, deemed as the next health food wonder food that uh, is going to solve all your health problems. So that's, you know, if you really, the majority of your diet, it consists of food that don't even require a label, you are going to be fueling your mitochondria that will help your metabolism, that will help you, um, you know, manage your weight much easier because your metabolism is going to be um, functioning at, at a high performing rate and your energy level is going to be at a high performing rate just because you are paying attention to this small detail. 
And so food is information to our mitochondria. And if you're eating lots of sugar, processed, inflammatory foods, so think of you know not just the sugar and carbs, but also the refined oils. So those are things that are um, in crackers and chips and um, all kinds of packaged foods that you probably don't even think about. And if you do my 30 day class, we do a, we have the recipes and you get the, and actually it's in the free 10 day. So if you do our 10 day, um, you get recipes on how to roast your own nuts. Because if you're wanting to go one, one notch up on the health ladder, you would want to roast your own nuts because unfortunately, the food manufacturers are not roasting your nuts, which are super healthy for you. They're in, in healthy oils. They are using the cheap, refined oils that they may have used chemicals to, to strip off all the oil off of the plant and then they burn it at a really high temperature to get the chemical off and it creates a great big mess for your body. So, so those refined oils are not your friend and it will impact your mitochondria, the health of them. Um, also something that will impact your, the health of your mitochondria is just overeating in general. So you, if you're eating too much at your meals and just too much in a day, then it overloads your mitochondria and it can damage their production. So, so you want to, if you listen to my last few podcasts, um, my last one specifically, it was on intermittent fasting. This is something that is occurring is you are really improving the mitochondria with the, with the intermittent fasting. Same thing with the ketogenic diet, those healthy fats are really beneficial to the mitochondria and they really love the healthy fats. So, so you know, just making those shifts will make a, a huge difference. So on the opposite side, so if you eat too much or you're eating all the wrong foods, it can damage the mitochondria. Also, eating too little can do the same thing. It makes your body hold on to calories. And eating less and extreme calorie restriction really forces your body to slow its metabolism and, and conserve. So that's where it's a balance. You have to find a balance. And I will tell you, I have many patients come in and it's easy to get confused with this after weight loss surgery because your belly is so small. and a small amount of food makes you feel so full. So you feel like I've just eaten Thanksgiving dinner when really you've not eaten but a few ounces of food. And your brain feels like that you, you've, you know, you've maxed out. But, and so you try to cut back on that amount of food and you know restrict 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 more and that's when it's really not doing your body any service by doing extreme restriction so it just puts your body in this conserve and storage mode because it's afraid it's not going to get uh, enough food for fuel so we talked about intermittent fasting on the last podcast so those those windows of time and not every day makes sense you're not putting your body you're not stressing your body but to do this day after day after day and i've seen it time and time again with weight loss surgery patients and and sometimes they really are not doing it knowingly it, it is just kind of happening because they feel so full so you have to pay attention and look at the big picture of what you're fueling your body with and do you really need to feed it more and not less because if you're really thinking about losing weight our brain it seems like just automatically goes to i need to eat less and sometimes it's the opposite you guys need to eat more so you have to drop that fear factor of you know i don't want to regain all this weight i've worked so hard uh, sometimes you are going against the things that will help you lose the weight. So making sure that you kind of optimize your eating 
and find the balance that works for you. And this is where I would say work with a dietitian to kind of get where you need to be because there's no same number of meals. There's no um, same volume for all of you that works. So you need to work with a dietitian that really understands this, to, that can really help boost your mitochondria and help boost your metabolism by focusing on you know, getting adequate nutrition in. So, and that's, that's really the gist of it. You want nourishing foods. So you want the whole real foods and things that's going to talk to your mitochondria and give them the information that, hey, go do your job because I just gave you everything you needed to, to work. So, so keep that in mind as you're making choices on um, you know, how to maximize your weight loss. So to optimize mitochondria, you need to eat the right foods, right kind of foods, and you have to eat enough of it. Not too much, but not too little. So you just have to be a balance. So um, there are some, there is a study that I found, there was a few of them, but I, this is the only one I'm talking about. There was impaired muscle mitochondrial function normalized one year after bariatric surgery. So um, obesity and type two diabetes are associated with impaired muscles, the skeletal muscles. So think of your legs and your arms, the muscles, um, uh, the, Obesity and type 2 diabetes are associated with impaired skeletal muscle mitochondrial metabolism. So that means your mitochondria in these you know, arms and legs are impaired when you have type 2 diabetes and you're obese. One or the other or both. And this was a very small study, but I loved it because of the results. So they did eight patients before surgery and then one year after um, surgery. And I, I don't know which surgery, I think it was the renal gastric bypass, I think is what it was. I don't think it was the sleeve, but I could be wrong. I would have to go back. Um, there is a link in, on, in the show notes on our website, so you can get that on there. I just did not write it in my notes. Um, and it was able to show that one year after surgery, the mitochondrial function was compared to that of a lean control. So you start out with diabetes or obesity, and then you lose all the weight, and the mitochondria, the health of those mitochondria and the function, the, the jobs that they're doing, improved after one year after surgery. So to me, that is awesome. And it, and it performed more the same or adequately like a lean person, somebody who was at a normal weight. So they concluded that the impaired skeletal muscle mitochondrial function is a consequence of obesity that recovers after marked weight loss. So because you're losing so much weight in that first year, your mitochondria is improved. So your metabolism is improved. Your energy is improved. All those things and your health is improved because the mitochondria are um, healthier. So the thing that I would say, and I didn't dig deep enough for this to, to know this answer, but this is something that I question. What happens at year three and year five and year 10 and 20? What happens in that time frame? And I think it all goes back to what you are doing individually as a person. How are you um, managing your health with your food choices? So, so let's look at what damages your mitochondria and this might help you make better choices in the future. So besides the quality and the amount of food you eat, you also may want to consider when maybe you're not feeling great or you're struggling with your weight loss, you might want to think about things like stress. Stress will damage your mitochondria. So if you're not managing stress, um, I always say you can't control the stress you're given, but you can control how you react to it. Um, if you're not doing well and you're reacting poorly to the stress, you need to work on your stress management coping strategies. You need to do some meditations. You need to 
Um, do some deep breathing. You need to do some yoga. You need to do some coloring. You need to do something that will help decrease the stress in your life. You also may want to consider your toxin exposure. So maybe something you are exposed to in your house, at your work, in your environment, wherever. Um, maybe you live in a, a very um, busy commuting um, area and you are exposed to lots of, you know, smog and and you know, fumes from gasoline because you're sitting in traffic all the time. Or maybe your house, maybe it has, you know, radon levels that are high or mold levels that are high, you know, or, or just any type of toxin exposure, even on the, the body care products that we use, that we slather on our skin or, or toxins that are in our food supply when you are buying junk. So, and, and with the recent Monsanto trial win of the um, cancer outcome that this groundskeeper had, it really has brought to light lots of areas that they are finding this product in just random foods. So that can also be something that you would have to consider. So getting away from those packaged processed foods, um, staying organic as much as possible, they can't use that product, and that would limit your toxin exposure. Also heavy metals, so being exposed to lead, um, cadmium, also, um, oh, let's see here. <laughs> Mercury, all those are, are issues that you have to consider. And there was actually something today that I was reading that they're finding it in infant foods, heavy metals in infant foods. And there was a, a, an article that I shared, it's been several months back on the heavy metals found in some protein powders. So it's important that you find products that are as clean as possible because it can damage your mitochondria. Um, also infections, if you're having chronic infections, think of UTIs or um, bladder infections or, or just chronic, you just get, you're getting sick frequently and that can damage your mitochondria too. So you want to boost your immunity, get on a good probiotic and start taking things to help support your gut health so that you are, you know, preventing infections or, you know, at least protecting your body from them. And then also gut bacteria. And, and this I found interesting. If the bad bugs outnumber the good bugs, these bad bugs actually release toxins called lipopolysaccharides, LPS is what they are. And you absorb these toxins, which create inflammation and unfortunately they damage your mitochondria. So that's why it's important to have a healthy gut because the more army of good bacteria that you have, the better your health will be and the better your metabolism will be and the better you will do at losing weight. So anything that causes inflammation and oxidative stress in your body or to your body will damage mitochondria. So make sure that you are paying attention when you're making choices in your life with what you're putting in your body and on your body and what you're breathing in on a daily basis. And some of that, you would go nuts if you just really worried about it and I just don't worry about it. I just do the best I can every day. I try to make the best educated choice on products for my family. I try as much as possible to make sure that the foods are or organic as as I can um, have available to me. Uh, if it's not, I make sure like on produce that I'm rinsing it with vinegar and water and making sure that it's sitting in that for 15 minutes to help wash off the pesticides um, and make sure that there's not, uh, I'm reducing the toxin, toxins. So what other things can you do to optimize your mitochondria to work for you? One is eat the rainbow. So eat a colorful, colorful diet and don't eat the same thing all the time. I know it's easy to get in a rut and just do your thing and not uh, change your food choices because you're, you're not gonna get all the nutrition you need. 
Plus, when you eat lots of color, so lots of vegetables and, and beautiful colors of vegetables all day, every day, that provides antioxidants. And guess what? Antioxidants cancel out the oxidative stress. So they are kind of the fire extinguisher to that oxidative stress. So make sure that you're eating lots of color in your diet. Eat plenty of healthy fats. Mitochondria especially love MCT oil or medium chain triglyceride oil. So that's coconut oil. That I even talked about on the ketogenic diet. I talked about it on the intermittent fasting um, diet podcasts on both of those shows. I've talked about this MCT oil being so valuable to us. You don't need a bucket of it, but you need some. So use coconut oil. Um, on a daily basis or get some MCT oil that you're using on a daily basis. Get rid of the junk food or highly processed um, carbs and sugars and, and all that stuff will put stress on your mitochondria. It's not providing the right fuel for your body, for your mitochondria to function. Um, another thing that is very helpful is strength training. It builds your muscles and creates more mitochondria. So that's an awesome thing. You want that. You want more mitochondria because that's going to help boost your metabolism and boost your health. Um, high interval intensity, high <laughs> interval intensive training is, or the HIT training is actually shown to improve mitochondrial function. So strength training, so using weights uh, or resistance or your body weight will um, increase more mitochondria and then using that short burst workouts. So you do something for a few repetitions and then you're incorporating cardiovascular into it. It will improve their function. So, and it's, it will help you um, see how quickly you, you burn oxygen and calories. So just that strength training alone and that high hit training will, will improve your mitochondria with their ability to burn oxygen and calories. And then you can take supplements also to decrease inflammation. So to put the odds in your favor. So that would be things like fish oil, CoQ, CoQ20, CoQ20, that would be things like fish oil, CoQ10, and B vitamins. It doesn't mean that you take a bunch of everything. And if you've heard me say many times, more is not better when it comes to vitamins, but you take them if you need them. If your body is short in them, you, you need to take those to help decrease the inflammation. Or you might have a period of time, if inflammation is way out of control, you might need to dose some of these things to at a, um, kind of aggressively. Uh, if you work with a practitioner, they'll give you the right dosing to do this. But um, you do the you know the fish oil, the CoQ10, and the B vitamins at higher doses for a period of time, and then you back down on them to. Um, be more of what you need. I would say fish oil, a lot of people don't get an um, adequate omega fatty acids. So, because we don't eat enough seafood and the, and the seafood has heavy metals that you have to worry about. So it's harder to meet those needs. But the other ones, sometimes you're good. It just depends on your age. You lose ability to um, have adequate supply of those as you age. So some of you may need to supplement with those long-term. It just depends. And that's why it's important to work with a healthcare professional that can check the levels of your CoQ10 and your B vitamins to make sure you even need them. And then the last one, what can you do to optimize mitochondria to work for you is to sleep seven to eight hours a night. Making sure that you are getting good rest and sleeping well and getting deep sleep, that will make a huge difference in your mitochondria, your metabolism, your energy, all that will make a difference in the big picture of weight loss. If, if you're only sleeping three or four hours a night, guess what? You are not going to be getting great results with your weight loss because your mitochondria are suffering. So I hope that helps. I hope it's given you something different to think about and things that 
we have trillions of them. It's kind of like gut bacteria. We have trillions of them. We have trillions of, of mitochondria and we have to feed them and fuel them with the right types of foods. So make sure that you are um, not ignoring these important diet changes and lifestyle and exercise and, and just all these things that tie into the health of your body, the health of your metabolism, the health of um, you know your your brain, and all that plays a huge role in the choices we make make on a daily basis. It's not those you know holidays once a year. It is the daily basis. It's it's always related to what you're doing on a regular basis. It's connected to to what your health outcomes are. So I hope this has helped you and given you a different perspective on what to focus on when you're making choices with your health. And please check out our website, wlsguthealth.com, and sign up for our 10-day Back on Track Challenge. It's beginning September 17th. And please connect with us in our closed Facebook group, the Gastric Health Club, and um, carry on this conversation there. I'd love to, to um, continue on talking about mitochondria and the importance of them and, and how to help you more. Ooh, ooh, ooh.